than in the house of the Lord. So good to be here and in the service of the Lord our God. Now, this is always a, a privilege for me to come to church, but to come to Brother Junie's here, it's a, just a little extra privilege. I've known Brother Junior for some time, and I was so glad to see him get in this good old gospel way and go out preaching the Word. See the Lord blessing him and the people all honoring him. That's just wonderful. Now, I know there was some people here this morning that had drove a long ways and got to go back tonight for uh, perhaps maybe go to work tomorrow for many miles down in Ohio. And, uh, or up in Ohio, I meant to say. And uh, I kind of lost my directions. <laughs> uh, up in Ohio. And then we promised that tonight we would have a, a prayer line. So we don't want to hold you too long. It's hot. And then for our prayer line. But we know that you have already been blessed by the singing and whatever you have done. It's, it's been blessed for you. And we're trusting to God now that He will uh, just continue to be with us and bless us and give the desire of our heart. Now you put everything you've got right into the service, all your attention, all the honesty and sincerity that you can. Now, I've been in prayer this afternoon now for the service tonight. And now, I hope to get back and be with you again soon and you all visit us up the tabernacle. We feel that this little church is a sister church to the tabernacle. Amen. That's what it is. It's just a little sister church of the tabernacle. This and up at Brother Grimm's and around. And so we're happy to visit our little sister tonight. And we trust that little sister will grow and grow and grow into a great lady. <laughs> and I believe she will too by the, the grace and the help of the Lord. As Paul told Timothy, be in season, out of season, be instant, repu reprove, rebuke, with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they not endure sound doctrine, but after their ears, itching of their ears, shall heap teachers. So we are knowing that God being with us is one of the greatest things. I was in the room this afternoon praying, and I thought, what is a greater Something to know, then you are saved. Now, just tell me what would be greater. I said to a friend of mine, Brother Evans, I said, Brother Evans, if I had a little button here that I could press, and I would go back to 20 years old, and would be 20 years old for 10,000 years, and be king over all the earth, and never get a bit older, just stay that age, have everything in the world in my own hands and live in luxury for 10,000 years and then be lost at the end of the 10,000 years or press another button and die immediately with eternal life. I said, I'd press the button for eternal life of not even take the second thought. For what if, and he turned and he said correctly, what if we had lived 10,000 years and tonight at 8 or 9 o'clock our 10,000 years is up? There you are. Amen. So there's nothing greater than eternal life. Amen. And it's for all of us. Whosoever will may come. Now, God is not going to hold a man responsible for because he's a sinner. Because he was born a sinner. But what God's going to hold a man responsible for is because that he remains a sinner. He don't have to remain a sinner for there is a provision made for his justification through Jesus Christ. Amen. So we are trusting tonight if there be some insider out who has not yet accepted Christ that this will be the night that something will be said or done that will wake you up to the place that you know you need Christ. And then if you just accepted Him as your personal Savior and have not yet received the Holy Ghost, I trust that tonight you will receive it. I see some of the tabernacle folks here. I'm going to say this about the big sister. <laughs> One thing that the tabernacle needs up there at our church, at the tabernacle of Jeff, 
is a rededication and a refilling of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right. Uh, Every one to get down to the altar and pray until they get a renewing of the Holy Ghost. The whole church be filled with the power of God. That's what we need. Not only the tabernacle there, but the body of Christ, universal. Amen. It needs a refilling. I like David said one day, Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Amen. Now, he had not lost his salvation, but the joy of it. And when it comes to a place that I can't enjoy my religion, my salvation, there's something wrong somewhere. Because it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. One of them said, taste and see the Lord is good. It tastes like honey in the rock. Oh, I'm so glad that I have tasted that. The Lord is good. And I love honey, but I never tasted any like that. <laughs> That's the best that I know. Now, we're going to hurry right into the service and see if we can let the church out early so the people can go to their places and of worship or work tomorrow in their homes. And now we are anticipating a great meeting out on the West Coast right away. And we are asking and soliciting the prayers of this church and all these people to pray for me. This morning, there was something happened. I've never went hardly to a little church unless God specially done something for me. I just love that. And this morning, after I'd gotten through preaching perfectly in order, the Holy Spirit fell among us. And gave a message to Brother Jackson that has just stuck with me all afternoon. Frankly, I'm getting the tape so I can play it over and over. I can get it. For recently, I've been feeling, my wife here knows, I've been telling her, that the Lord was going to visit me with some way, right away. And it might have been that message this morning. Because it's, give me a different view. He gave me a text that I wish to speak on for a few moments. I wish to read now out of the book of Exodus, the 14th chapter and the 15th verse. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. May I read the 16th also. But lift up thy rod, stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall pass on dry ground through the midst of the sea. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. And now, let us bow our heads just a moment for prayer. And if there's any people here that would like to be remembered in this prayer, may you let it be known to God by an uplifted hand. The Lord grant to you your desire. Lord, we now solemnly and honorably and childlike walk on the sacred grounds of prayer. We lay aside every weight, every sin, every thought that does so easily beset us that we might run with patience the race that's set before us. And as we move into these blessed sacred sands of prayer, knowing this that Jesus said, Ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. And again it is written, If ye abide in me and my word in you, ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Then we come, Lord, not in the name of this little church, or in the name of its pastor, though we love them, or not in our own name because we have nothing to offer through it, but we come in that all-sufficient name of the Lord Jesus who gave us the promise that
That if we asked in His name, we could receive whatever we asked. And we would not want to ask anything that was a myth. We would want to ask only that which would be pleasing to you. You know our conditions. You know what we have need of. You know what this little church has need of and what each individual has need of. We would pray thee, Lord God, to give to us severally as we have needs. May the great Holy Spirit move down upon this building and around these people and sanctify this group that the Holy Spirit might have the right of way through every heart here tonight from the least of the children to the oldest. Grant it, Lord. These hands that were lifted up, you most surely seen them, Lord. If a sparrow cannot fall in the street without you knowing it, how much more do you know when a child of yours lifts its hand towards heaven for bread? We are promised that it will not receive a stone instead. We know that you shall give them the bread that they ask for. And we would ask to remember all that's sick and afflicted. So glad to hear from Brother Rogers that he said he felt well enough to go to work. We are so glad for that, Lord. Praying that you will heal him, that that cancer will not have the, the right of way, but will be stopped by the blood of the Lord Jesus. By faith we place the blood of the Lord Jesus between the death, cancer, and our brother. Now we ask for all that's needy everywhere. Get glory to thyself. Honor thy word, Lord, as we have read it. And give us a great healing service. For the glory of God, we ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. For our text tonight, I would like to use the three words. Why? Cry, speak. And for a subject, I would like to use the attitude of people towards God's anointed. Just for a short time, perhaps 20 minutes or 30, then we'll start the prayer line. God had called Moses a special calling. And when God calls a man and anoints him for a, a certain duty, he expects that man to carry that out to the letter. God doesn't want to give a man a commission and him hum-haw around about it. He wants him to go straight forward and do just exactly what he's commissioned to do. Don't look right or left. Just move forward. And the children of Israel had been in bondage for some 400 years. But God had promised that He would visit them. And God keeps every promise that He makes. Amen. He cannot lie. He's God. Amen. And the time had come for this visitation. And I believe tonight, paralleling, that God made a promise that He would return again. Amen. And I believe that we are near that time. Amen. This morning when I was speaking on that subject, I could almost feel the, the current as to saying that the nearness of the Lord Jesus now, Moses being called for this purpose, but he was a man God trained him 80 years before he ever was able to use him. 40 years in the palace and 40 years in the wilderness. God can train a man, take him 100 years for 30 minutes work. God knows how to train. What the schools had put in Moses 40 years had taken 40 years to get it out. 
But one time in the presence of the anointing, one time in the presence of the burning bush, he knew more about God than he had learned in books in the 80 years of his life. God trains his man, then anoints him. Gives him experience, takes him through the rigged training, down to the sands of burning punishment, trying, testing. Not only does he do that to his prophets, but he does it to his children. Every son that cometh to God must be chastened and tried. Amen. Tested by his word. See when the pinch comes, the strong time, when it faces death, are you able to stand there on the word of God? Amen. Say, God said so. That settles it. And God had called such a man, and that man was Moses. But Moses, a great deal like us, every time it come a place to something had to be done, Moses called out, Oh Lord, what must I do in this place? Now isn't that just like we do? God had blessed him and anointed him above his brethren, give him a message and a ministry that had not been on the earth since that day. Until that day. And yet every time something taken place, Moses run off to God with it. Lord, what must I do? Amen. What must I do in this case? God got kind of tired of it, I believe. He said, why are you crying to me? Speak to the people and go forward. Amen. My, if any time it ever looked like the ought to retreat was then. But God has no retreat. Amen. There's no place to retreat in God. Go forward. Amen. The doctor says it's cancer. Go forward. If he says it's TV, go forward. Amen. If the devil says you can't give this up, go forward. If your home says that you're going to be a fanatic, go forward. Amen. The church turns you out, go forward. Amen. There's no retreating back. Amen. Go forward. Speak. And go forward. Speak what? His word. Amen. And go forward. Thus saith the Lord. And move on. Amen. Cry out to the people. But the people then rebelled and said, It had been better that we died down in Egypt. It had been better that we had our graves marked than from the hyenas and the vultures to pick our bones in this wilderness. Why did you bring us out here? After they had seen that God had approved Moses to be his servant. God, when God comes into a person or two persons, into a congregation, into a man or a woman, he vindicates his presence. Amen. God proves that he's there. For when God comes, supernatural signs begin to appear. Amen. This person becomes a changed person. They're not no more like they used to be. Sin has vanished from their life. Fear and doubt has vanished. Flusteration. They're solid, stable. Live or die. It's Christ. They don't care what comes or what goes. Nothing shakes them. They move forward. And Moses fretted with the people. And other people fretted to Moses. And he said, what must we do? And Go forward, what's the, the answer? Now they said, we are out in this wilderness and the armies of Pharaoh is approaching us. They're camped just behind us. But Moses knew to obey God. And if God sends a representative and he anoints this representative and sends it into the world, the people must obey that representative. Amen. It's always been that way. All down through the Bible. Moses is called for the job. God has said in the word he would do it. He promised that he would send such a, a thing in that day to deliver him. And God did his part, sent Moses and the children of Israel. Just because little stumbles and things come along to try, they failed to march with Moses. Now, isn't that just like today? 
We see the message come forth. We see the church rise to a place on the wings of the Holy Spirit until the power of God trills every person in there. The glory of God falls around and signs and wonders take place. Less than a week, Satan is permitted to come in to that congregation. Why does he do it? God permits it. And then the church begins to murmur, fall back. Maybe it wasn't so. There's where we fail. That's the failing of the church. Regardless of what takes place, it's God move forward. Well, say there's brother so-and-so. I shouted the victory with him, but he's back. No matter what he done, that has nothing to do with you. Well, so-and-so professor said that that wasn't right. That wasn't of the the Lord. No matter what professor said. So you're the guy that stood on the sacred grounds. You're the guy that was at the burning bush. What professors of Egypt. What a Pharaoh would have said to Moses. Oh, you just imagine you've seen a bush. You thought you had a... That's a roaring in your ears. Moses knew where he stood. Moses knew what talked to him. And every man that's born of the Spirit of God knows what talks to him when the Holy Ghost comes. Amen. It speaks of peace that passes understanding. Moses was called. He, and God then, after Moses receiving his call, he went down to Egypt. Then he's got to get the people to believe him. Now he was the anointed prophet of the Lord, but the people didn't believe him. Though he, God proved it. By signs and wonders that he did. And because they didn't believe Moses, the servant of the Lord, then they fell in the wilderness and every one of them died that left Egypt. Not a one of them was saved. Every one died and perished beside Joshua and Caleb that started out. Because they murmured and complained Against the vindicated message that Amen. God has spoken the Bible. Amen. Amen. Oh, when I think of that, when God promises anything, God keeps His word. Amen. And when God confirms that word to you, then believe it. Amen. God promised in the last days He'd pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. And your young man would see visions. The old man would dream dreams. And upon my hands, maids and maidservants, will I pour out of my spirit. He show signs in the heavens and in the earth. And great signs and wonders would take place in the last days. Amen. And here we are in the last days. Amen. And God's keeping His Word. Amen. The Holy Spirit's here. Amen. And it vindicates the coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And the people turn it down and murmur against it. Just like it was, that's our deliverance. Moses was uh, the the signpost of the deliverance of Israel according to God's Word. The time drew nigh. God sent Moses. He was God's light for that day. And today, the time's drawing nigh. Atomic bombs are ready. The world's going to be blown to pieces pretty soon. Ashes all over the earth. None but volcanic ashes. The time is at hand. And God promised He'd pour out His Spirit and take His church out. And the Holy Ghost is here representing that with signs and wonders proving that He is the same Jesus Christ in the form of the Holy Ghost doing the same work that He did when He was here on earth. Blinds the people. The gospel always blinds the people if they don't open their eyes. You either walk or it blinds the people. Yes, every case in the Bible, when God sent a messenger, and that messenger was received, there was a revival in that time. But if it was not received, there was no revival, but just chaos followed the unbelief. And so is it today. Nothing less. I think today I would like to make mention of one woman that I think of in the Bible. And she was bad to begin with. Rotten to the core, a young, beautiful woman by the name of Rahab. She was a heathen to start with. And she was a prostitute on the street. But she heard 
that there was a God. Not an idol that set dumb or a declaration of creeds. But a God who lived among His people and anointed them. And signs and wonders was following them. She heard about it. One day two representatives come to Jericho. And quickly, her on the street as a prostitute, she called them, took them into her house, said they're after you. And she hid them. And I like her attitude. She never said, I'll believe when I see the great anointed Joshua do some sign. If I could have seen Moses do some of the signs, I would have believed. But she said, I have heard. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the word. I have heard that the God of heaven, who is the real God, is with you all. And he's done great signs and wonders. He dried up the Red Sea. He brought plagues upon Egypt. We see how he turned the enemy over to your hands. And our whole country is trembling because of it. I'm asking mercy. Amen. She didn't say, I'll have to see this God first. Let me take my judgment and take what my scripture says about that. And see, she had never found it. But faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. And she believed. Amen. And when these words were brought back to Joshua, the word Joshua means Savior like Jesus died. Oh, and it brought back to Joshua, God's anointed. Her house was permitted to stand. And when the people marched 13 times around the walls of Jericho and sounded the trumpet, every place on that wall fell but her house. Because she believed before she'd seen anything. She accepted it. She said, they're servants of the Most High God. And I will receive it up on the basis of hearing it. I believe it. Faith cometh by hearing. She heard it. She believed it. She accepted it. I notice they said, bind this scarlet string that you let us down with. Bind it in the window. That red spoke of the blood of Jesus, the atonement. And every place in that wall fell but Rahab's house. It sat on top of the wall. God honored her and he, she saw as great a miracle performed there as it was drying up the Red Sea. Amen. For the hand of Jehovah was over that little place to protect it. She had accepted it. God's anointed. God's servants went over there. Anointed. And she believed it. Before she seen miracles, she believed it anyhow. And accepted it. Elijah, the prophet of the Lord, anointed. Oh yes, God anointed him to be prophet. He was Pastor Elijah. I don't imagine Jezebel would have wanted to call him that. But he was her pastor just the same. God made him her pastor. So she hated him. And God told him, said, you go up on the mountain and you sit down there. I've commanded the crows to feed you. I'll water you from the brook Cedrath. And he sat down there. And the king said, go get that fanatic and bring him down here. And the soldiers all armed with the command of the king. They start up the hill and Elisha probably raised up and said something like this. Gentlemen, this is a holy spot. I've been called of God to be His prophet. Amen. He's commissioned me to stand on these grounds Amen. and proclaim His message. Amen. And the message that I have for you, don't you approach this Amen. ground. Amen. Amen. Stay off of here, the Amen. uncircumcised. Have you not read when Moses, the servant of the Lord, crossed over the river? And the uncircumcised tried to impersonate him. They all drowned Stay off of this ground. Oh, they said, that old quack. What school is he from? We'll go in anyhow. Elijah said, if I be a man of God, let fire fall Amen. from heaven and vindicate my ministry. Amen. And about that time, fire fell and 
Burn up 50. The king might have said lightning struck him. So he sent another 50 and the same thing happened. Amen. Unbelief. Man who mock and scoff and make fun of the anointed church of the living yeah. God shall perish someday yeah. in a hell. Won't only be burning for a few minutes. It might be a long time. So it's holy grounds. God's anointed stands on there. No uncircumcised or unclean thing can enter that spot. That is true. If the impersonators try to act like that they're doing it, you'll find out they'll soon come to naught. But what does the impersonators vindicate? That there is a real. There's a real God. There's some people who want to, they don't believe it, but they want to act like they believe it. But a person that knows God is a man that's born again of the Holy Ghost and filled with the power of God, with a thus saith the Lord and goes forward. They know something has struck their heart. They know that they're right. So Elisha was a man of God, anointed that they did not believe. Look at David when he sat with Nathan the prophet. David, a man after God's own heart. And he was the anointed. God anointed him king. David is not only a king, but he was a prophet. So Nathan was the great prophet of the nation. David is more or less a poet and a prophet, songwriter, musician. And prophecy really, in its original, is more like a a song when they prophesy. Then, one day while the prophet and the king was sitting together, David said, it's not right for me to live in a house of cedar in the ark of my God under a tent. And I want you to listen to the notable words of Nathan. He said, David, oh, don't David. fail to get this down. Yeah. Get between the lines. David, do all that's in your heart, for yeah. God is with you. Yeah. Oh, my. When I think of that. Yeah. David, do all that's in your heart, for God's with you. Yeah. Why cry to me? God's with you. Speak and go forward. God's anointed you. Move on. Don't him all around say this, that, or the other. Should I believe God? Should I trust Him for this? Trust Him for every breath that you draw. It was the great General Stonewall Jackson who's been my favorite general since Joshua. Stonewall Jackson was asked one time, how can you stand with just a handful of men when the opposition is so great? That's how he got his name of Stonewall. He would not budge. He know no retreat. What could we accredit a man like that to? A man, when the Yankees come down by the thousands and he stood there in the minority, but they'd never move him. He stood like a stone wall. All the rest of the rebel army had retreated back. Lions come along and said, What's the matter with Jackson? Why isn't he going? He said he stands like a stone wall. <laughs> That's where he got his title. The other generals asked him, he said, Mr. Jackson, a little bitty fellow, black-headed and blue-eyed, only is about five foot two inches tall, very modest, mild-speaking little fellow, said, Mr. Jackson, how can you stand in such opposition? Bashful like he kicked his boot on the ground. He said, I never take a drink of water unless I thank God for it first. Yeah. That's where it is. There's no retreat in God. Speak and go forward. That's right. That's God's commission to His church. We have no time to slack. They say the revival's over. It isn't over. Go forward. It's time that Pentecost is played out. It isn't. It's time for Pentecost to rise in the name of Jesus Christ and go forward. There's no retreat. There's no stand on the same ground. Let's move with the Spirit. Or the Spirit will move on to somebody else and leave you standing. You follow it. Do all that's in your heart. For God is with you. When Jesus came, the Bible said, Peter said on the day of Pentecost, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you. How? By signs, miracles, and wonders, which He did in the midst of you all. 
For you all yourself is a witness to this. What was he? He was a sign working one. Anointed. Another place it said, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you. God's approval was upon him. How did he approve him? By signs, wonders. Jesus said, if I do not the works of my Father, then don't believe me. But if I do the works of my Father, then believe the works. If you can't believe me as a man. In other words, he said, if you can't believe I'm, I'm he, you will perish in your sins. But if you don't believe me, at least believe the works that I do. Amen. Oh, he was approved of God by signs. Nicodemus well expressed it when he came by night and he said, Good master, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Amen. 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 They couldn't hide it. We know that you're a teacher come from God, for no man can do the things that you do, the works that you do, lest God was with him. They realized that he was approved of God, anointed of God. He was God's servant. The church had to recognize it, though they hated him. They called him a devil. They tried to find all kinds of excuses. But when it comes to face of facts, they believed that he was the anointed one. But they thought more of their tradition and they did the anointing of God. Men and women today will join some social t- standings in a church. Join some intellectual group because they love to get in the intellectual sections when they know that the Spirit of God has life and moves. Amen. Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And the way He was then, that's the way He is now and will be forever. Amen. And the messenger... Of God is sure the Holy Ghost. To reject it is death. To receive it is life. Approved. How does people accept it? Now the Holy Spirit has one message. Speak the word. Go forward. That's right. Don't cry to me. There's the word. Speak it and move forward. Thus saith the Lord. That's the message of the Holy Ghost. Now the people begin to murmur. They fell. We don't want to murmur. What is the works that Jesus did? He said, my works declare me. My works proves who I am. My works vindicates me. When God sent Moses, the works vindicated him. When God sent Elijah, the works vindicated him. When God anoints a man, his works vindicate him. When God sent the Holy Ghost in this last days, the works vindicated him. Joining a church, joining an organization, accepting a creed or a doctrine. If that's the Holy Ghost, then there has always been a Holy Ghost in all kinds of religions. But this Holy Ghost has to be the same Holy Ghost that it was back on the day of Pentecost. Or it's not that same Holy Ghost. It has to never change. It's the same Spirit. It has to live forever. Jesus said... The works that I do, he that believeth on me, St. John 14, 7. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Amen. He that believeth on me. Amen. No man can believe Jesus Christ to be the Son of God until he's received the Holy Ghost. Amen. You're only taking it by faith and accepting it. You can't say that it is. Amen. You can say, I believe it is. But no man can call Jesus a Christ until the Holy Ghost is in him. The Bible said so. Amen. The Holy Spirit has to come in first. Then it gives a witness. You know yourself that Jesus is the Christ because he lives in you. Amen. Then that same Holy Spirit introduces himself to the people. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. And the church laughs at it and makes fun of it. We're just living in that day. The, the atmosphere getting charged up. For an atomic bomb. For judgment. The church is getting ready for a rapture. We're waiting. Anticipations. Waiting. The church is waiting the coming of the Lord. The world is a shaking wonder which one's going to get the bomb first to the other one. We don't care which one gets there. We're going here. So it doesn't matter which one gets there. It doesn't have a thing to do with us. We're just rejoicing, happy, believing it one day. We'll hear a sound from heaven and here he'll come. And his church will be caught up in the air to meet him and be with him. 
He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. Peter said, Jesus of Nazareth, a prophet, anointed, anointed and approved of God among you all, which you all yourself know. The Bible said also that God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost, that he went about doing good, healing the sick. That was a sign that he was what he claimed to be. That's the way God sends it. That's the way it's supposed to come in the last days. And the Holy Spirit that comes in the last days isn't to draw us to a creed. It's to draw us to a church. Amen. It's to draw us to God and supernatural signs. is to follow that Holy Spirit. Amen. What is the signs of the Holy Spirit? If Jesus of Nazareth was a man approved of God, anointed with the Holy Ghost, let's see what kind of a message he had. What did he do? How did he act? See his action, then we can follow his actions. We find that when he first come on to his ministry at the age of 30, when he was anointed with the Holy Ghost, the first thing he did, he met a man by the name of, of Peter. And he told him, said, your name is Simon, and you're the son of Jonas. And he believed him. Why? Moses had spoke before his time. And he said, the Lord your God shall rise a prophet just like me. Amen. That'll be the sign you'll know. He'll be a God prophet. Amen. That Messiah will be both God and prophet. Amen. And he'll do the sign of a prophet. Amen. When he does, like the Jews today, Louis Petrus sent over a million Bibles to those Jews, New Testaments, that come from down in the other parts of the world and never heard of Jesus. Been down there for 2,500 years. They begin to read that New Testament. And they said, if this be the Messiah, we know that Messiah will be a God prophet. If this is the Messiah, and he's not dead, but he's alive again, let us see him do the sign of the prophet. We'll believe him. Amen. For I'm a, our Messiah is a God prophet. Amen. Jesus said, when he met Peter, he said, your name is Simon, and your father's name is Jonas. And Peter fell at his feet. He knew that that was who was spoke of. Strictly away went. They went after Philip went for Nathaniel and told him what he'd found. And when Nathaniel came up before him, he said, there's an Israelite in whom there's no God. He said, Rabbi, when did you ever know me? He said, before Philip called you when you were under the tree, I saw you. Amen. He said, you are the Son of God. Amen. You're the King of Israel. They knew who that was. That Samaritan one. She said, when he said, bring me a drink, that woman, the nation of Samaria, said, hold it. Said, bring me a drink. Said, it's not customary for you, some, uh, you Jews to ask Samaritans such things as that. I'm a woman of Samaria. He said, but if you knew who you were talking to, you would ask me for a drink. I'd give you waters you don't come here to draw. The conversation went on for a while till he saw where her troubles was. He said, go get your husband and come here. She said, I have no husband. He said, that's right. You've had five. And the one you're living with now is not your husband. You said it well. She said, sir. Amen. Brother, quickly, the spirit of God on that woman. Amen. Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Amen. We know that the Messiah is coming. And when he does, he'll tell us these things. But who are you? He said, I'm he. She dropped that water pot and away she went. She got a drink out of a well that was bubbling up in her soul. She ran into the city and said, Come see a man who's told me the things that I've done. Isn't that the very Messiah? That was him yesterday. That's him today. That's forever the same. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and forever. Why do we linger? Why do we wonder? Do we wonder whether God will heal or not? We have seen Him heal the thousands. Blind, sick, lame, halt. Those that are dead and pronounced dead raise up again. Or the power of the prayer of faith. The Holy Spirit reveals and hundreds are healed. Blinded eyes, deaf ears. The world tried to ignore it. They try to shake it off. But they can't. It comes right back again. It's before Him. You can't shake Him off your hands. When Pentecost first sprung up 40 years ago, 
They said it won't last. It's a bunch of holy rollers. Last. It's the fastest growing church in the world. Amen. Last year it produced a million five hundred thousand converts. Amen. Which is beyond all the rest of churches put together. One million five hundred thousand last year. There you are. It's not a burning up. It's, it's not burning down. It's burning up. Amen. <laughs> yes. They say they're crazy. They try to shake the people away from them. They try to take the people. Get away from that group. Don't you fool with them. There's nothing to it. Get away from it. Just the same. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. One, one great sign goes forth in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They spoke with tongues. And they believed that many hundreds and hundreds poured into it. Then it comes to a place they try to shake that away. God pushed right in and give interpretations on top of it. Then as soon as he got through it, that God sent prophecy in him behind that. He said, if there be one among you that's unlearned and one speaks in tongues, but if there be one who prophesies and tells the secrets of the heart, they'll all fall down and say, God is truly with you. What is it? There's that Messiah sign again coming in. Yes, sir. If one reveals the secret of the heart, the whole congregation will say, truly, God is with you. Messiah sign. That's what would be. We see that. More they try to shake, more God's going to do. And one day He's going to get tired of shaking them. He's going to get tired of pushing that church around. And when He does, He's going to get enough and He's going to turn one string of judgment and He's going to reach down with an everlasting hand and pick up His church. She'll fly away, oh glory. Fly away in the morning. Oh my, I long to be there. I will be. On that morning when she takes the wings of the morning and flies away into the arms of her lover. Oh, what a day that'll be. Today, we're living. Why do we worry? Why do you wonder? Why do you wait? Speak and go forward. Don't cry out. Say, oh, Lord, is it your will to heal today? Sure, it's your will. Thus saith the Lord, it's his will. Can I receive the Holy Ghost today? Is the days of miracles past? Certainly the days of miracles is here forever. Amen. The Holy Spirit is here. Amen. Does man speak with tongues today? The Bible said so. These Amen. signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. Does man interpret message? The Bible said they do. Amen. That settles it. Thus saith the Lord, speak, don't cry, speak and go forward. God don't want a bunch of crying babies. He wants man that's got backbones. Not wish bones. Wish I had it. Wish I could do this. Backbones that'll stand in the breach. Amen. 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 Claim the victory. Claim the call out in the midst of darkness. No matter what anyone says, we speak and go forward. Believe the message. God, Jerry, he'll vindicate his message. God, Jerry, he's the same God that he was back in our own Galilee. He's the same God that he was in the days of Moses. He can't fail. Do you believe it? The Holy Spirit has come. The signs of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, If I don't do the works of my Father, then believe me not. But if I do the works of my Father, then you believe me. When He told the woman at the well something that she had wrong with her, she said, That's the Messiah. He said, The one that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he also, and more than this shall he do. For I go to the Father. Now the King James has got greater if you take the original, it don't say greater. How could anything greater be done? Amen. That's right. He stopped nature. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He cleansed the lepers. Oh, he done everything. Amen. But he said, more of it you'll do. For I'll not only be with you, but I'll be in you Amen. to the end of the world. Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus. Just one word from you will mean more than all the preachers in the world could speak. Just one word, Lord. Speak. Don't cry. Speak. Go forward. I can see you one day coming down off the mountain. You were hungry. You looked up on a tree. You was expecting to find some figs there and there was no figs. And you looked at that tree and said, You'll never bear no more figs. And he walked away in the next day about noon. When they passed by, the tree had begun to wither. 
And one of the apostles by the name of Peter said, Behold the tree, how quick it withers, since thou did curse it. He said, Verily I say unto you, If you, if you shall say to this mountain, Be thou plucked up and cast into the sea, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you have said will come to pass, you can have what you've said. Oh God, what a promise. Who did it come from? The Creator of heavens and earth. He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. We thank You, Lord, for this promise. He that believeth on Me, the works that I do shall he also. Now, Father, in the, to follow this message, if You'll just speak tonight something in the line of supernatural, that perhaps maybe someone here it never did have an idea that you still lived in that manner, that they believe maybe that you resurrected, that somewhere in a far off land that's called heaven, that you lived there and commissioned it all over for us to have our creeds and so forth. How foolish it is for a person to accept that only because they have not been taught the Bible. You said, I will be with you to the end of the world. I'll be in you, and the very works that I do shall you do also. It's not me that doeth the works, but the Father that dwells in me. You said to the disciples, take no thought what you shall say. It's not you that speaks, it's the Spirit within you that does the speaking. Oh, how we thank Thee, most holy God, for these promises. I am so happy to know it. My heart is thrilled to know that right here, me already 50 years old and living here in the shadows of time at the evening time of my life and seeing the evening time of the world's history near the coming of the Lord Jesus and to know this great truth rests within my bosom. It burns like fire. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's a zeal there that calls out to scream to the world, Oh, receive him here, it's too late. Grant, Lord, that tonight that the perfect example that Christ gave us will return to us tonight in the power of His resurrection. Grant it, Lord, for the glory of God, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I love Him. I Because He first loved me and purchased my salvation on I get in a spirit of worship. I love Him because He first loved me and purchased my salvation Lord, oh Lord, come now. We believe you and we are asking you to anoint us. Anoint your servant, Lord. Take my eyes and my lips, my, my mind, my, my intellects. Use it to your glory. Speak through your servant, Lord. Hear through the ears of the congregation. Give glory. Get glory to thy name, Lord. May there not be a feeble person in our midst when this service is over. Now I have spoken, Lord, to the people. Now you speak and we'll go forward to believe you that you're here with us. 
Fear not, little flock. It's your Father's good will to give you the kingdom. We believe that, Father. Now, take the service, Lord. This is as far as I can go. It'll take you from here on, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, help me. Amen. God, behold, I say unto you tonight, my people, that I am in the midst of thee. And I say that I shall stretch forth my hand in a great and mighty way. Yea, even as my prophet, whom I have ordained in these days, that thou should know that in him dwelleth the true spirit of the living God. I have brought him into the midst of thee to guide my son and my daughters, and I shall be with thee in a great and mighty way. And I shall reveal unto thee tonight, yea, even the diseases of thy body. And thou shalt be richly blessed of me, if thou shalt believe the words that thou now hear, for I speak unto thee by my spirit. Yea, even confar- in confirmation of the things that thou hast heard tonight, yea, my word is sure, yea, it is unto thee, yea, yea, and nay, nay, for my promises are sure unto my people. Amen. Uh, that's called the spirit of prophecy. Falls upon different ones. Now he made a promise. He gave us a promise. That means that he's here. See? Now Junie is a timid little fellow. It isn't like him to speak like that. But when the anointing catches, you see, it's a different thing then. That's right. If sometimes the Spirit of God cuts like a two-edged sword, see. And it does things. Now, we're thankful to God to see these things. Now, I believe that Junie and Billy sat here a while ago. Is that right? To, or, yes, to give out prayer cards or something. Said there was some of the people come. I was expecting a few more, maybe from the outside and so forth. But they said there wasn't too many. So, we'll line up what we got maybe at one time. Uh, we'll begin at number one and line all people up and pray for every one of them. So we'll see if the Lord will reveal anything to us in the prayer line. We'll start from number one, line the group up. Who has number one card? Would you just come? Heart to cheer, oh, hear the voice of Jesus. Sweetest note in seraph song, sweetest name on mortal tongue, sweetest carol song Jesus blessed Jesus I was watching in the line I'm not sure I don't think there's anybody there this girl standing right here she spoke to me this morning and told me that she was here from somewhere and she had she had been healed once in the meetings but she never said anything about herself. She just said she'd been healed once in the meetings. I believe that is right. And the fellow behind her, I don't believe I know either of those. Or this lady. I don't know. I know Sister Funk. Listen here. That's the one that I know right here. She's the only one that I know in there so far. Now, if anybody comes in the line and if I know them, well, I'll try not to say anything, you know, more than prayer because you'd think that them people had said it to me. But now we don't know that the Holy Spirit will say anything. He may not. But here is a perfect, perfect brother. Now there's one thing is to say something. Another thing is to see it proven. The Bible said, prove all, A-double-L, all things, then hold fast to that what's good. Now, if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, He doesn't change then he'll have to act in his church. And now, how many knows that Christ is the Spirit of God? Amen. We all know that he's the anointed one. Jesus was the anointed. That's where people who believe that these three or four different gods get all mixed up. Amen. God is a Spirit. 
Jesus was the body that the Spirit of God dwelt in. Made him Emmanuel, God, tabernacled on earth. He was God. Jesus Christ was God, yet he was the Son of God. His flesh was the Son of God because God created, but inside he was God. It's not me, said Jesus, does the works. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. And that day you'll know that I'm in the Father, the Father in me, I in you, and you in me. <laughs> there you are. Now, I believe that this lady is, I don't know her. I don't think I do. If I have, I, I, don't, I don't know you now. I've, I've forgotten you. I guess that's right. That's, that's right. And that lady there, I don't believe I know her. This lady or that. I don't believe I know anyone besides Sister Funk. If that's about right, raise up your hands. If I, That's right. All right, sir. How many out there that knows that I don't know you, and yet you're sick, raise up your hand. Say, I, I like prayer. I, and you believe that the Holy Spirit could touch you, do something for you? Then... Just raise up your hand. Say, I, I, I'm in need of prayer. Raise up your hand. God bless you. The two people there. Lady here. All right. Some lady back there. Now, you don't have to be up here. There was a woman one time that touched his garment. And he turned around and said, who touched me? And while well, they said, all oh, touching you. He said, but I've gotten weak virtues went out of me. He said... I got weak virtue. I perceived that strength went out of me. And he looked around till he found the woman and told her of her blood issue and she said it had stopped. Is that right? The blood issue had stopped because she had believed Jesus Christ. How beautiful. That's a, and Jesus Christ is a high priest tonight that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. Just touch Him. Believe it. How many that does know me? And yet you know I don't know what's wrong with you. But you'd want God to heal you. Raise up your hand. Now, just look this way and believe. Have faith. Now, the Bible claims that Jesus is the same. Claims that the works that He did would be done by those who believed in Him. Especially in the last days. You believe we're living in the last days? Now remember, the signs of God to the intellectual is foolish. It takes the spiritual to reveal it. Just like babies. Now the prophet said, there will come a day. Now that was about 2,500 years ago. There will come a time where it won't be a night or a day. It will be a dismal day. But in the evening time, the sun will break forth. It will be light. How many of you ever read that prophecy? Sure. Light. Now what does it mean? The sun geographically rises in the east and sets in the west. And anyone who knows history knows that civilization has traveled from the east to the west. China is the oldest civilization we have. All right? From the east to the west has went civilization. Now, east and west has met. We are the most civilized world, supposedly. The most civilized people is in the, these western people. They're more modern. They have all the modern things and so forth because civilization has advanced as it traveled westward. Now, what fell on the eastern people? Jesus Christ came on the eastern people and the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. It showed great signs and wonders. Then it left. And it come a time after about 200 years after the death of Christ, about the second round of an apostles, then they come into the 300 day according to the pre nicene fathers the history of the sacred history of the church, that there they formed what was called the, the early fathers, and they formed what's known today as the Roman Catholic Church in Rome. Therefore, they made their first organization. And Rome, when the Catholic Church says that it's the mother church, it absolutely is the mother of organization churches. It's the first church to ever be organized. 500 years it went in the Catholic Church until Martin Luther. He protested the Catholic Church by refusing to call the communion the literal body of Christ and protested it and throw the communion on the floor. And he was given a penance to crawl on his knees and refused to do that and form what we know as the Lutheran Church. They had free press, paper, and so forth. Then they organized it and made an organization likened to the Catholic Church. Organization. That went on for several hundred years. 
along came Swangley. After Swangley, he, he was kind of a, an offcast. He believed that Jesus was the Son of God in so much that he was called the Son of God, but the Son of Joseph, that he wasn't di divinely born. Now, the, the Swiss people hang to the Swangley doctrine. Out of there come Calvin. Calvin went forth, and out of Calvin come forth others, till we found John Wesley. He rose up in the days of the Calvinistic Church of England, which was the Anglican people, the Anglo-Saxon. From that came forth the holiness group, which is called the Methodist. And when they did, they formed a church called the Methodist Church. Out of the Methodist Church came forth from that one to another. Then came the Presbyterian, and from the Presbyterian came forth the the uh, Baptists and the Baptists to the one to the another and on down, on down, on down till the last church to be formed is Pentecostal. And the Pentecostal blessing that come in the form of the Holy Ghost, they organized it. That's absolutely God never did organize a church and I don't believe ever did endorse an organization. The Bible speaks against it and claims that the harlot, the Roman church will be burnt with her children. That's exactly true. But out of there has come a day that the prophet said that was a night or day, a dismal. They've had enough light. They'd say, well, we fuss. we're Baptists, we're Lutheran, we're so-and-so, we're that. Because of organizations, little truths that they found in the Bible, Luther organized upon the just shall live of faith. John Wesley organized sanctification, second definite work of grace. The Pentecost organized on speaking in tongues as the evidence of the Holy Ghost. All those things are true. That's light, but not all of it. Amen. And when you draw a creed, you have to stay with that. You can't move so the Holy Spirit moves out and goes somewhere else. Amen. Then they organize it. Now, that's exactly sacred history. But now it's come a time. The evening lights have come. Amen. Civilizations come over. And now the sun's are setting upon civilization. The end is here. The end of the world is here. The end of time is here. The end of the church is here. All things have come to an end. And just as the sun sets, the same sun that rises in the east sets in the west. God promised it shall be light in the evening time by the prophet. The same sun that rose and showed the Holy Ghost through Jesus Christ back in the early days on the eastern horizon as shining in the western horizon in the last day, showing the same signs that Jesus prophesied would be. Amen. It's just, this is Scripture's friend. Amen. Buck, you, it's up to you what you think of it, you see. Here's a woman. Walk this way, sister, just as you will. As far as I know, I have never seen the woman. I don't know her. She's just a woman. Walked up here. She may be a member of this church. She may be a member of the tabernacle for all I know. I don't know. Just a woman. If I've ever seen her before today, I don't know. I don't know. But God does know the woman. Well, now, if Jesus is the same yesterday and forever, then she's here for some cause. I don't know what it is. What if this was just like the the woman at the well it don't have to be the same kind of case but it could be just a man and a woman meeting the same way maybe the woman's a critic maybe she's a Christian maybe she's up here just suspicious to try to find out something maybe she's up here because she's sick maybe she's up here standing for somebody else I don't know that's true I can't tell you but God does know then let's say she is sick because it's a healing service. Perhaps she is. Might not be. But if she is sick and she's standing here to be prayed for, God knows I don't know nothing about her. Well then, if I don't know the woman, know nothing about her, and then she's seeking Jesus for healing, I'd tell her this, that by His stripes you were healed. Now, healing is just like salvation. You don't get salvation tonight. When Jesus died, He paid for your sins. You just accept it. See, when He died, He took away the sins of the world. When He died, He healed every sick person. The complete debt was paid. Now, what if Jesus is here tonight in a form of a man, like He was when He walked in Galilee? What if He had on this suit and was standing here and she is standing that close to our Lord? What a, 
What a, I'd sure love to stand like that to him. Amen. What if she was standing there and he was standing here and he'd say to her, Woman, believest thou that I am he? If thou believest not, thou shalt perish. She'd say, Yea, Lord, I believe that you're he. Well, what do you seek? I seek healing, Lord. My child, can you not believe that I did that when I died back in her, when I said it was finished? Was not the Scripture written that said that I was wounded for your transgressions with my stripes you were healed? That's it. Well, I should wonder, wonder if that is the Lord. Uh, he, anyone could say that. Any man could preach that because it's in the Bible. But if that's really Him, He'd know my heart because He knows the heart of the woman at the well. And He promised that same thing. Amen. Now, He never said He'd come back in a body form and do it, but He would send the Holy Ghost that would dwell in us that that Holy Ghost would divine the secrets of the hearts. Amen. For He'll show you things to come, reveal the secrets of the hearts. Is that true? Amen. He promised it. Then if He's the same and I, I say this, that I believe that this great Spirit that's among us is the Holy Spirit, I believe that He called me for this purpose. Doesn't make me any more than the man that got saved this morning. Just your servant, your brother, makes me less than you. Because I'm sent to serve you. I'm a servant to the public. A public service is a minister. To serve the public. To be the underdog. To take this knocks and blows of the public. Whatever it is, stand there. And if you haven't got grace enough to smile and take it, then you ought to go back to Calvary and reconfirm your commission. That's what you're supposed to do. Now, but if Christ is here, then let Christ speak. I don't know the woman. God knows. I don't know the woman. I don't know nothing about her. But if I've told the truth, then Jesus Christ has to stand by His Word because it is the truth. Does that make it right? Amen. All of us believe that. All right. Now, here's where the showdown comes. Is the Scripture right or is it wrong? Now, here's where it is not in some dark rooms. It is not you know, where the devil works. It's right here before the house of God. Right here before the anointed saints and the children of God. The purchase of His blood. Here we stand, both of us. Before God, before this holy platform, this Bible, the Holy Spirit present. Now what's going to happen? I'm a man just like you are. Now it has to take divine. It has to take spirit. Or it won't work. But I know that He's here. He made the promise. He can't go back on the promise. Now, Lord, from henceforth I pray that You will manifest Yourself that people might see that You're the Son of God. And this is permitted by You to fulfill the Word to we Gentiles. The Jews saw it in their days. The Samaritans saw it in their days. But the Gentiles didn't see it because it was hid from them. And you said they'd have their day. Now, it's the Gentiles' age. And you're showing them. If you revealed yourself as Messiah to the Jews by telling Peter who he was, telling Nathaniel where he was, and you revealed yourself to the Samaritans by telling the woman that the trouble she had then you cannot pass the Gentiles with just joining church. They have to receive the supernatural because you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you make yourself knowing the same. Grant, Lord, it'll be so to fulfill Thy Word. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask it. And Father, I pray that You'll protect the people because we realize that if evil spirits be upon these sick people, they'll go to critics or what more. So I pray that you'll protect and give mercy to all of us. We ask in Christ's name, amen. I just want you just to answer. First, I just want to talk to you like our Lord talked to the woman at the well. Now you say, why are you doing that, Brother Branham? Catch your spirit. Just like he did. said, bring me a drink. She come brought a drink. Was going to bring a drink. But she said, it's uh, not customary for you Jews to ask the Americans such. He's beginning to talk to you, but if you knew who you were talking to. Now, upon this, we're strangers meeting our first time. Then you're here for some purpose. I don't know what it is. 
But if the Lord God will reveal to me what you're here for, or something that you have done, something that you are looking to be done, and if He can tell you what you have been, surely you know what you will be. For you know where that's the truth or not. You know where that's true. Because you're the one that lived that part of life. Well, if He can tell you what you have been, then can tell you what you will be, you'd certainly feel good about doing it, wouldn't you? Sure would. So that's the secret of it. See? That's the power of it. That's the Holy Spirit to reveal Himself as He promised. Now, you're a, ma- you're a woman, me a man, we're standing here, you are got a spirit or you wouldn't be standing there. I have spirit, I wouldn't be standing here. I perceive that you are a Christian because just as quick as your spirit catches here, it's welcome. The Holy Spirit, which is above us, recognizes you as His child. Now, I had no idea where the woman was Christian or a sinner or a blasphemer or what, but that's spirit. And now, if the congregation, how many ever seen the picture of that angel of the Lord that they got in Washington, D.C.? and Here it is, right here between me and the woman. Now, you'll admit, or you know that something's near you. A real sweet feeling. That's right. So the people that know it, just raise your hand so they say, a real sweet feeling. I'm looking right straight at that light. It's moving right between me and the woman. Now, that pillar of fire followed the children of Israel in the wilderness. It was in the burning bush that talked to Moses. When it was represented in a man, Jesus... He said, before Abraham was, I am. I am was the one in the burning bush. And the works that I am did when it was in Jesus promised it would come in the last days and do the same thing again. Here it is. Same pillar of fire. Scientists know it. The world knows it. The church knows it. We know it. Here it is. Will it work? Is it the same thing? Certainly. It's the same thing. There's some blood disease wrong with this woman. I see the blood looks like it's thin or white. Oh, it's diabetes. She has sugar diabetes. That's right. I don't know the woman. Let her be the witness. A test was showing something that was sugar diabetes. That's what's wrong with you. That's true. Now you say you guessed that, Brother Brandon. We'll see if you guessed it. Praise God. <laughs> Besides that, she suffers with a tremendous nervousness. That's right. You got something wrong with your legs also. That's thus saith the Lord. It isn't guessing, is it? You're not from here. You come to the south. You're from Texas. Your name is Miss Christian. Go back. You're healed. Amen. <laughs> Now, it isn't guessing, is it, friend? It's the Spirit of the Lord. If thou canst believe. Just a minute. She's just rejoicing now, having a wonderful time in the Spirit. See, Something happened to her. The curse left the woman. If you'd been suffering like that, you'd probably be feeling the same way. All right, lady. Now, do you believe that the Lord Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever? If the Lord Jesus will speak through me and tell me what's your trouble, you'll know whether it's the truth or not. You're not here for yourself. You're here for somebody else. Your son. The son has uh, lung trouble and trouble with the bowels. Now, that handkerchief that you wipe the tears with, put it on. Don't doubt. You get well. Don't doubt. God bless you, sister. How do you do, lady? Now, this woman standing here is shattered to death. Mm -hmm. 
You believe the Lord can heal you? God heals cancer, you know that. Cancer of the breast. That's right. But you're accepting your healing. Your Mrs. Woodward. Return. Believe with all your heart. It'll leave you. If you can still believe just like you are now, you'll not die with it. God bless you. Go on your road. Rejoice. Have faith. Now, this is a lady I believe that spoke to me this morning, said you've been healed in a meeting before. All right? <clears throat> Seven years ago. All right? Just move up off the fan there if you can. Maybe you can hear me a little better. Just move this way just a little closer. Then, as far as I know, we're strangers to each other. No more than just saying how do you do to you this morning. Now, I told you, if you wanted something for discernment, better wait till tonight so that we could get together in the room. And let the Holy Spirit reveal something maybe that would help us. Now, you're very sick because you can't hardly stand there. And you, you want to believe. You're trying to believe. You was once shattered to death, too. That two birth or something like that that you had years ago. And now you got trouble in your throat, and you're afraid it's cancer. You're afraid that that's what it is. You're wondering if that is true. Also, you re- you want prayer. You're praying for something. You're someone. It's in your home. That's fine. You are from Ohio. Mrs. McCarroll, O Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, cast away the fear from this child. If you spare her life years ago from that shadow and see it pass away, it could be likewise tonight. I condemn this devil. Leave the woman in the name of Jesus Christ. May she return and be well. Come into a future meeting giving testimony of this healing. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Don't doubt a bit. Go home. Get well. Sure, I believe you're all right. Just walk on out there and talk to you. Amen. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. You believe, sir? You believe me to be his prophet? It not, it's just his servant. Let's say it like that. We're strangers to one another. I, I don't know you and you don't know me. Now, there's something happened somewhere. Something happened in the audience. No, it wasn't. It's again. It's, it's somebody you're praying for. It's a child. That's right. All right. It was a child. I thought it was a child in the audience, but it's your child. Oh, it's uh, several things wrong. The for hernia operation and so forth. You're from Illinois. Return back. Have faith. Your child will be up. Lord bless you. Thou believest? Have faith in God. Don't doubt. I know this man. Sitting here in the corner. I don't know his name, but I know that he come here. Uh, he comes down every once in a while. He's from Michigan, but he's sitting there praying. Amen. I don't know what his trouble is till right now, but I do know now. Amen. So I'm going to tell him because I believe it's going to help him. Amen. Your back trouble's left you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 You believe with all your heart, sir? It's blood and trouble. Diabetes. You're not from here either. You're from Georgia. You're Mr. Johnson. Go back. <laughs> believe with all your heart. It'll leave you. Amen. Now... 
<laughs> oh, uh, Amen. I don't know you, don't believe. But I see Mrs. Shire appeared here. Is Miss Shire in the building? Oh, she's praying for the same things wrong with this woman. You got stomach trouble, and you got stomach trouble. That's right. Is that demon trying to hold each one of you? You're healed. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You don't believe that, do you? You believe God will heal you, make you well? A little boy. I'm afraid of TV. But you believe that God will make it be all right? Don't worry, Sister Funk. It'll be all right. God bless you. Who else has got prayer cards? Look, about one or two more. I guess. That's your mother. I see you're standing by her today. She's got a garter she wants to pray for. Her. <laughs> That's right. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Amen. Just have faith in God. Just any of you look and live. Do you believe it? Amen. Why, Christ is here. Amen. Feel different now, don't you, sis? Now you go home and be well now. This. Well, sure, certainly. Yeah. Sure. Amen. Just see, you, you got that complex wrapped around, you see, but the power of it broke just a few minutes ago now. Just keep believing. Press right on. Amen. Go forward. Speak. By his stripes I'm healed. Amen. Stand right up to it. And you just go on and be well. Everything will be all right. It looks all light around you now where it's dark when he's on here on a platform. You're all right. The blessing's on you now if you just keep on going. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Do you believe with all your heart? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just feel like the Holy Spirit wants to do something right outstanding. Amen. Stop crying over there, lady. You're praying for a friend that's in a new Albany hospital with TB. <laughs> <laughs> You believe he's here? Amen. Well, let's bow our heads just a moment now. Holy Spirit of God, while my flesh is a trembling anointing with your presence, not only mine, but others in here, the power of your resurrection lives among us just now. We are aware that we're standing before the living God who shook Mount Sinai. Not only that, but he'll shake the earth that he's coming, who raised up Jesus from the dead. And standing here in this little church tonight, Lord, we could not build a place that would be worthy for you to come to. But in your humility, you come to the humblest. We're so thankful for that. You have visited us. You've proved yourself among us. We believe your word. Lord, I've spoken as your servant. Now, may we go forward as the message has bid us. May we go forward in the power of his resurrection. May there not be a feeble person. May the Holy Ghost just completely take into this building now and heal every person that's here. May there not be any sickness left among us. May there not be one doubt among the people. May there be such a shaking among the people just now that they'll feel that all things are well. Grant it, Lord. While we have our heads bowed, I want person who you're sitting next to, I want you to lay your hands on the person next to you. Just lay your hands on them. Inside or out, no matter where you are. Lay your hands over on one another. I don't care what you have need of. That doesn't matter a bit. I don't care where the person is. Might be across the seas, across the ocean. No matter where it is, God covers all space, fills all time. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's, he's infinite. He's here now. He hears your prayer. The Bible said these signs shall follow them that believe in each one of you are a believer. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. You've got your hands on one another. You're connected up here as a group. Now, I want you to pray for each other. Pray in your own way. Each one of you, just start praying. Pray for the next person. Say, Lord, heal the person I got my hands on. Lord Jesus, as they are praying, hear their prayers, Lord. 
that they might know that it isn't just one servant. They are your servants. We are all one. We love you, Lord. Our different phases, our different creeds, our denominations never separates us from the living God. We are now in His presence. We're thankful and grateful that you're here. We're unworthy of your presence, but we pray that you'll answer our prayer. We're doing this according to your word. You said these signs shall follow them and believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. And they're laying hands on each other. Let the great Holy Spirit, who can reveal the secrets of the heart that was promised by the Bible, the living, resurrected Jesus who promised to be with us to the end of the consummation. Let Him now perform the work that He promised. We believe You, Lord, as we commit this audience into Your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Upon the basic authority of the written Word of Almighty God, by the evidence of the Holy Spirit who is here present, that knows the secrets of the heart and reveals the secrets to the people. Upon the presence of Him, the basis of God's Word, I pronounce each and every one of you healed in the name of Jesus Christ. May you go and never sick no more. May God bless you and protect you. I hope to see you again real soon. Until then, the service back to the pastor, Brother Jackson. God bless you.